this part, we're going to look at something that's very important for your future, and that is the application letter. When you go looking for a job, you can apply and they want your resume. The resume is a list of your education, your work experience, and all of those details. You can find many places online and in our ebook that help you to make a nice looking resume. Right now, I want to teach you about the harder part though, the application letter. When you write an application letter, it will make a huge impression on the people who interview you or ask you to come to an interview. So it's your first step or your big step actually. When I read application letters, I can immediately see if the person is serious, if they're detailed, if they work hard, if they take their work serious. If there's many mistakes and it makes no sense, then I know this person is not going to be a good employee. So it's very important in the application letter to make a good impression. And I'm going to show you how in this short summary of writing the application letter. Now remember, an application letter goes along with your resume. So one is a list of your history, kind of your education and work history, and this is a letter. Usually the letter should not be longer than one page because if it's too long, people see it and they say, oh no, it's too long, it's too much for me to read. So keep it down to one page. Now let's take a look at the application letter. The application letter will usually be sent with the resume together. In Taiwan and China and Hong Kong, lots of times if you apply for a job that's a foreign company or international company and even some big domestic companies, they'll ask for you to have a Chinese letter and an English letter. Now maybe you write the Chinese then you translate it. I guess that's okay but I want to tell you that the normal Chinese approach and the English approach are very very different. So I'm going to talk about the English approach and I hope you can write them separately to do a better job. This letter will follow the style of any business letter and that is it should have a nice heading, it should have an opening, it should have a body, it should have a closing, it should look nice and help you make a professional appearance or look professional. Before I go on about the details of this letter, I just want to emphasize one thing and that is about this date issue and many people make this mistake. Let me say that I want to list out some dates. Maybe I have some important dates like maybe I graduated from school in 2015 and Maybe I got my first job in 2016 and maybe I had another job when I was in college and that was in 2014. Now when you write this in your resume, you need to write it this way. The late, later, latest date goes on top and the early date goes on the bottom. So these dates, let's put them in here. The first thing at the top of the list would be 2016. The next thing in the list would be 2015. The last thing in the list would be 2014. That's very important and everybody seems to mix this up and people who get it right, I know they're professional and they've checked. There is one way to write this and that is the last date goes first last goes first because that's the most important it's the most recent and things that are earlier go bottom towards the bottom of the list they may be important but they go down the, towards the bottom they go down later towards us sooner to the today closer to today goes up on the top that's called reverse chronological order reverse chronological order it's very important to get that right now in the application letter, we don't really worry about that so much. Because in the application letter, there's one thing you do not want to do, and that is do not tell a story. I see lots of application letters where the applicant will tell a story. And when I say tell a story, I mean they'll say, oh, hello, let me tell you, I was born in Zhanghua County and my parents owned a shop. and." Blah, blah, I went to junior. They tell me the whole story of their life. That is not the right way to write an application letter. An application letter is a chance for you to sell yourself to the company, 
to say, I am valuable. I have something that's worthwhile. You're going to pay me, it's just like buying a product. So I need to show you the value you get. You're gonna pay me money and I'm gonna give you more in return. And here, I'm gonna tell you about that. So please don't go into all the stories about your family and about your history with your family and all those things. I think there's a lot of confusion because in Chinese, this is often called the autobiography or it's translated as autobiography. And even lots of Chinese applications will say, write your autobiography. What you should be writing is this application letter, which is a very short, very clear, little tiny piece of information to sell yourself, tell your value. So let's take a look at how this letter works. This letter will have four paragraphs. The first paragraph will be an introduction, just a quick introduction. Each paragraph will be directed towards the job. That is, each paragraph should be telling something about you and how you match the job. And you should only be telling important skills to the job. So if I'm applying for an accounting job, I should be talking about my accounting skills. If I'm applying to a job that needs Japanese, I should be talking about my Japanese skills. If I'm applying to a job that needs Japanese, but I talk about my German skills, that is not helpful. Now later, maybe after I get the job, maybe that'll be good. Maybe they need some German skills, but that's not the way you do it when you apply. You wanna focus and just show the skills that you have that match the job now, so I can give you a chance, so you can get a chance to get an interview, so you get a chance to get into the company. So let's go ahead and look at the parts of this letter. The first paragraph is very easy. You need to tell how did you find this job. There's two ways to apply for a job. One is called solicited and one is called unsolicited. So one way is you just send a letter and one way is you see an advertisement online, for example. That's the normal way these days. So you need to say how did you see the information? So I saw your information online or something like this. And you can give a date and a location. You need to tell something very quickly about the company you're applying to so that this shows you did your homework, you know something. So you don't wanna look stupid, you wanna look smart. So in this way you want to say, I know something about you. I can work with you because I already studied something about you. That's very, very helpful. So let's look at some simple examples. These are pretty short because the first paragraph, you don't wanna to spend too much time here because you need to keep your letter down to one page, remember? So let's look at the first example here. I saw your advertisement for a sales manager in the China Post on June 8th. So here is a date and here is the place I saw it. So this could be online or this could be offline. I am very interested in this position and feel that I am well qualified. Please consider me as an applicant for this position. So very straightforward. Look at the second example. A Miss Hayworth recently informed me that there's a job opening in her department, the marketing department of the Asian division. At this time, I would like to be considered as an applicant for this job. So here we have a good example of I know somebody. So if you know somebody, you can go ahead and put their name in there now in the first paragraph just to bring that up now. These two are different. This first one is solicited, and this second one is unsolicited. Different, you see. Solicited means you saw it in the newspaper or you saw it online. Unsolicited means you did not see it, you just sent a letter to apply. You may think, that's crazy. How can you just apply for a job when they haven't advertised? Well, yeah, you can do that. You actually have a better chance to get a position if you're lucky enough that they have one open. Of course, they may not have one open, then you don't have a chance, but that's okay, you can still try. And if they see your letter and think you're special enough, they may even offer you a position, although they didn't have one open right now. It's always possible, who knows, right? Paragraph two. In paragraph two, you wanna describe what are you doing now? What kind of work are you doing now? And more detail would be good, but remember, you need to show the detail 
in order that the person reading it feels that detail is important to me. You see, if you said something like, I can use Microsoft Word, well, is that really an important detail for this job? If you could say, I can program Microsoft Word using Microsoft Macros, and that office needs that, that would be good. So the more specific you are, the better. If you say, well, I can use Adobe uh, Photoshop, is that important? But if it is important, can you mention more detail? Like I can use Adobe Photoshop and here is a link to samples of my work and you can see that work and I have uh, successfully published this work in some kind of online magazine or something. So by giving more detail, that's better, but you wanna give the right detail and that means the detail that helps me think, hmm, you are good for my company. You have skills that we can use now. If you say everything general, like, I can use computer, well, isn't that everybody? Or, I can use a cell phone, right? That is everybody, so that's not really so helpful. Here's an example, paragraph two. And in this example, this is a recently graduated student, and this student is trying to emphasize leadership skills and responsibility. So this is very clear, these are the two skills I think I have. At Taichung College, where I am a student, it has been my pleasure to be the leader of my class for the last three years. As such, I often have had to take responsibility for class projects and activities. I have organized several trips for my class around Taiwan. The planning of these trips involved complex scheduling, good communication skill, and a strong sense of responsibility. I feel these skills are important to success. That's a great example right there. The job this person is applying for, responsibility and leadership, communication, this must be very important for this job. So if you apply this job and I see this, I say, hey, I can see what you've done. But if you write a letter and you just say, I am responsible, uh, well, everybody says that. I need proof, I need evidence, I need you to show me what you've done that matches this job. Here's another example. In this paragraph, we're gonna look at emphasizing communication skill. I am presently employed at the number one sports center. In this part-time job, I have learned how to communicate effectively with customers. My job is to answer customers' questions about products while also handling any complaints. Because Number One Sports Center concentrates on new products and highly specialized exercise equipment, customers have numerous questions about use, quality, price, and service, etc. So in that example, you can see the job he's applying for or she's applying for is related to communication or maybe communicating with customers. And I wanna show you, I've done that before. So let me give you the example. So paragraph two is emphasizing how your skill set matches that job. 